When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Glad that car alarm stopped up there. (laughs) Um, When you pray... Do you pray internally, uh, in your head, in your mind, or do you pray out loud? I can hear you all saying both, right? You pray both in your head, you pray and you talk to God individually about your concerns and worries and anxieties and stresses, and then I know you all pray out loud because we do it together here in this space. Jesus does both things too. Jesus goes off and spends time apart with God, and then Jesus also prays aloud. And I think that when he does pray aloud in front of people, it's a teaching moment. He's teaching us something about relationship with our Creator. So this morning, he's in this scene of distress and despair and anxiety and confusion and death. He's confronted by sisters, Martha and Mary, whom he has disappointed. He's confronted by their anger, perhaps, that he didn't get there in time to save their brother. He's clearly wrestling with his own emotions as he's connecting, having empathy, and begins to weep, maybe weeping because he's experiencing the loss of his friend in his life. There's a lot of stuff happening amidst these wailing crowds. But Jesus takes a moment to pray aloud. And he says, Father, I thank you. Starts with gratitude. Father, I thank you that you have heard me and I knew, interesting it's in the past tense, I knew that you always hear me. That's the part of the prayer I want to pay attention to this morning on a feast of all saints as we give thanks for the saints who have gone before and the saints who are in our lives, the saints that Lola already is as we welcome her into the body of Christ through this community of faith. I give thanks that you always hear me. What is a saint? A saint is a person who is holy. What makes a person holy? Connection with God. Coming into contact with God. Coming into contact with holiness is what makes us holy. We are in a holy space. I think most of you think of this and think of churches as a sacred space. It is holy. We are at the first part of the liturgy, but um, after halftime, we're going to do the Holy Communion because we set a part 
a particular meal because we believe having this meal together helps us become holy people. I will say, this is the food, the holy food for holy people. We are holy because of our connection to God. And the thing about Jesus that he did in his humanity is that he never forgot about this connection. He knew he was always connected with God. I know, God, that you abide in me just as I abide in you. Jesus never separated from that love. That is what informs Jesus' divinity in his humanity. That's what makes Jesus human and divine. And that's the gift God has given all of us to, but we don't really believe it. One of the things that I'm going to say in the prayer up at the altar during Holy Communion, that in some form or another, in every Eucharistic prayer we say, in any Catholic small C church, God gave his only son, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. When I say without sin, or when you hear that he lived without sin, what do you think of? I'm going to hazard a guess that you all think he lived a perfect moral life. He lived perfectly. He didn't break any rules or any laws or any commandments. No. (laughs) Jesus sinned. By the time, by the people of his time, what is he getting in trouble for all the time? He's getting in trouble by the authorities and by the religious people because of all the sins he's committing. Eating on the Sabbath, healing people on the Sabbath, eating with the wrong people, um, not following the rituals of his day and time, and breaking all these sins. You're going to be like, oh, Ariane, you know, we don't believe that stuff now. Like, that might have been a sin then, but it's not a sin now, so it doesn't really count. What if I told you Jesus broke one of the commandments? What? You know the commandment, honor thy father and mother? I'm sure Angela and Mark will say this to your kids at some point. <laughs> honor thy father and mother? Well, do you all remember that story where Jesus, in the Gospel of Luke, he's hanging out with Mary and Joseph at a religious festival, and he decides to leave. He doesn't, doesn't tell them, doesn't send a quick text saying, like, I just went off somewhere. He goes over to the temple and is gone for three days. Mary and Joseph have no idea where he is. You think that's respecting your parents? And then when they get there, Jesus looks at them and says, well, you should have known I'd be in my dad's house. Ouch, Joseph. Wow, that that felt good. So Jesus didn't follow that commandment because Jesus was all about showing that it's the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. Because if it's making someone else feel bad, it's not love. It's not the spirit of the law. And we're terrified of believing that love resides in us and we're connected to that love all the time. Look what happens when some people in the crowd this morning say, wow, Jesus is crying. Look how much he loves him. That immediately sets off the blame game. And people, other people say like, well, if he loves him so much, why didn't he like heal him? Like he killed that blind guy. Immediately that level of connection with suffering terrifies him. When he says to Martha, open the tomb. Oh, but it's going to sink. Ah, I don't want to let that into, I don't want to let death in. I don't want to be aware of our finite existence. I don't want the messiness of that in this moment. She's afraid. Love casts out fear. And when we don't believe that we've been given gifts to share out of love with the world, we aren't living into the saint we were created to be. So just quickly... You all, most of you know I went to the Olympic Observatory of Music in Boston. And um, this was a million years ago, and I went there as a singer. And after postponing going into the actual conservatory building to practice, because I was so scared that I was at a conservatory, like Peabody, down in Baltimore, finally I was like, you've got to go, Ariane. Like, you're going to college here for four years. You have to go in there and sing. So I go one night into a practice room. You'll all be very familiar with this choir. And I just stand there and I listen. And I hear violinists and oboists and flute players, trumpet players, and I hear singers. They are so good. They're so good. And I think, oh, wow, I can't pull the wool over everybody's eyes for four years. I mean, there's no way I deserve 
to be here. And any belief in myself and the fact that I had been given a gift to share with the world was completely annihilated by feeling not worthy and not good enough and I'd never be able to prove myself. And that pretty much lasted until the day I decided I just didn't want to pursue this for a living anymore. It lasted until I was in Winter Park, Florida, singing with an opera company, but going to a Met Council audition and having a guy sit down and tell me all the ways in which I had sung that Wagner aria wrong. And he was right. It was fine. But I just sat there thinking, like, my gift is getting killed. It's being destroyed within me because any love I have about what I do is gone. And I believe incessantly in Beekner's quote that we are meant to find where our greatest joys meet the world's deepest needs. Because when we share our gifts, it actually brings love into the world and it becomes a reciprocal relationship, a back and forth. That's what we are meant to do. And guess what? Once I stopped pursuing singing, all of a sudden, my singing got better. I don't know what that was. But I didn't care anymore because I was simply singing for the joy of doing it. So when I see this image of the tomb and death and Lazarus all bound up with these cloths, and I know that we are gathering for all saints and remembering the eternal gifts of those who have gone before as well as the eternal gifts that we all have now, I ask you what I hear Jesus asking me in this gospel. Where are you dead inside? Where is fear keeping you from living into a gift or a risk that God is offering to you in your life right now? Where does your fear of ending something, where does your fear of letting go, where does your fear of risking disappointing another human being, where does it... Where does your fear of risking disappointing who you thought you were supposed to be? Where are you bound up with those cloths? And you need to be unbound and set free into a resurrected life. God doesn't create saints so that people can feel better than. God creates saints and gives us gifts to knit together into one holy communion and fellowship. We shine our light to encourage the light of others. So where is that for you? Where do you need to cast out fear? Perfect love casts out fear and live into the saints you were created to be. Amen.